last time we talked about speech output devices and the reason we need speech output devices. This time we will start talking about the design of outputs. We had first have to look at the objectives of the design of outputs while designing outputs and picking the output devices we should take into account the user group and the proposed use. It was obvious when we talked about speech output devices that the user group were people who did not have their hands free or eyes free and they had diverted their attention and the speech essentially gave them a signal uh, while they were doing something else. And uh, so, the, in that case the user group are somewhat like you know you might say pilots who are uh, piloting a plane or a driver who is driving a car so that otherwise his eyes are occupied. Okay. And, uh, so, you have to look at uh, uh, some method of uh, getting their attention. So, the user group uh, is and the proposed use, these are important obviously. And um, also in the case of particularly uh, printed outputs which are the major amount, major type of output which are used in uh, data processing for in many information systems and large companies and so on. For instance, um, uh, if you are looking at examination processing then the volume of output is very large. So, one has to look at the volume of output whereas, if we are just printing an email letter the volume is just one or two pages. And so, the design in that case is obviously not very important whereas, the design is important if it is a very large uh, volume as also it is important if it is for a specific user group or for a purpose. Periodicity, how often should the output be printed out and um, at what times the, the output should be delivered, timely delivery when required, whenever the user requires it. For top management, obviously top management has too many other things to do. Their primary job in an organization is strategic planning and uh, they are not concerned about day to day operations. So, for strategic planning you have to present them summary highlighting important results, so that you bring, you bring it to their attention and uh, do not give them all kinds of detail. The higher up in the organization, the smaller is the amount of information you present to them and also in a form which is easily digestible. So, graphical outputs like pie charts, bar charts and maps are really a lot more um, useful for top management. We will see later on what these charts are and when these charts are being will be used, but um, the more than printed output a graphical output is lot more appropriate for the top management because for decision making, uh, very quick decision making you require something which can bring out the significance of uh, the results of the output. So, the significance can be easily perceived by the management it will help them. Middle management you, uh, you give a little more uh, outputs to them. So, they give you give exception reports and um, whatever reports are required for tactical management because their primary job is tactical management as we saw. And uh, so, the output volume should be reduced, uh, it should uh, it, it could be little bit larger than for strategic management, but it should not be great amount of detail which you give to the operational management. Operational management there is day to day working, complete details are needed. Suppose uh, you are actually a person who is uh, looking at details of inventory, then the entire inventory detail should be available to you with along with some analysis of the inventory. And for middle management uh, the more important thing would be uh, the status of very high value inventory, is there too much of high value inventory? or is some inventory going out of stock and so on. 
because lateral management has to take a decision on when to order and stuff like that. And then top management would be interested in the value of the inventory and how much of inventory is there in different categories and uh, so how to reduce that inventory it would be his primary uh, goal. So, to, to help him you have to provide the appropriate uh, type of uh, an output. So, examples apart from the inventory details are things like payroll. Uh, payroll uh, is uh, uh, the pay slips that we created for every individual in the organization and the operational management who operate the system should actually dispatch the uh, pay slips to each individual in the organization. Great sheets of an examination, uh, checks to be printed to be sent out to people. So, uh, particularly checks are important because they are, uh, they are obviously um, uh, monetary, anything to do with money responsibility is higher and but so the management, the operational level management has to make sure that the checks are, uh, that the right number of checks have been printed and the right uh, names are there and, and so on. Um, the periodicity of the reports, uh, top management whenever there are significant, any significant changes you inform the top management. And uh, you do not have to really uh, send it, uh, uh, you know, in a normally uh, the, the period may be once a quarter, that is, that is once in uh, uh, three months or so uh, towards the uh, time when they have to kind of review their operations. So, once in three months you send certain reports, but whenever there are any significant changes in the operations which you want to bring to the notice a top management, you have to do that. So, give option to ask at any given time, when you give a summary, if the person wants to get details, that option should be provided to get uh, details. As I said, periodicity is a quarterly normally. Middle management uh, send daily exception reports. Every day anything ex which is exceptional like for instance, we got a large number of absentees on a particular day, then uh, that has got to go to the uh, middle management. So, they should, uh, they should kind of take a decision why there is a huge absentee on a particular day. Uh, so, there are situations uh, when there is a for instance, suddenly there is a, an increase in the total inventory value on a particular day or suddenly some uh, item has gone out of stock uh, which is very critical, uh, those kinds of exceptions had to be brought to the attention of the middle management. Provide summary and terminal with, op with option to look at very greater details and request. Okay. So, normally nowadays uh, machines are all on a network and so you give on the um, terminal itself some, some um, uh, freedom for the individual to ask for details when required. And operational management is regular periods, if it is a payroll once a month, uh, if it is uh, grade sheets maybe once a semester and so our period depends on the application. Um, the structure of the report particularly op designing the operational reports is what is uh, one of the more uh, uh, critical things in any organization because operational reports are uh, important for day to day running and the computers are very good at giving you prompt uh, information for day to day running of the organization. So, the structure of the report is important to uh, be able to get the attention of the operational management and uh, very often the report design takes up a fair amount of time of the systems analyst because the report layout and the design is of crucial interest through operational management and they insist on certain types of uh, layouts which they like. And layouts change from organization to organization to organization because to some extent the way in which it is laid out is subjective, it is not always very objective. Some people like uh, uh, certain uh, way of reporting and, and so on. So, uh, you must have some flexibility in reporting or creating an output report. 
So, but normally all reports have a report heading, what is all this report about and uh, every page must have a heading uh, because the pages if you are you know and also every page should be paginated. Suppose there is a misplacement of pages and so on, you need to be able to put back in the proper order and uh, detailed heading for each column. If there are multiple columns, normally in payrolls it will be the uh, ID number, the name of the individual, the uh, gross pay, various deductions and various heads and the net pay. So, all these are columns and each column must have some title and um, uh, detailed heading for each column. Set of records forming a logical group is called a control group and is given a control heading. In other words, in order to be able to track any errors and so on, what you do is make up a batch, smaller batch or something like say 40 or uh, maybe one or two pages. At the end of it, you give a, a summary of whatever is there in that previous uh, set, so that you can track down. If there is any error using the control, you can get to that particular batch where the error occurred. So, the, there is also a footing or uh, at the end of the uh, the, uh, uh, in the report, labels are used to describe information contained in the control group or called, called control footings. There is control footings are normally they come at the bottom of the page, that is why it is called a footing. It's, so, control information is called control footing, labels printed at the end of the each page of a report is called a page footing. See, the control footing need not be always at the end of a, a page, it can be in the middle of the page, whereas at the end of the page, some summary of the page is normally given and it is a, it's a page footing um, because the last batch may be some odd number in any case. Labels are used to give control information for the whole report called final, final control footing. There is at the end of the report, you have final control. Uh, which consists of the entire data which has been printed. A label printed at the end of the entire report is called a report footing. These are kinds of terminologies which have been used for many years from the data day from the day data processing started. See, there is uh, the page heading, uh, the column headings. These are all common sense really. And control footings, uh, wherever you have control totals taken and then the page footing and then report footing. At the end of the report, some, some report, some uh, summary has to be present. The example I have given here, report heading, Indian Institute of Science academic role list. Okay. There is the uh, report, the heading of the report, page heading, role list of students in semester 1 of 2001, 2000, and control heading, because you normally will do it for each department. So, list of students in aerospace engineering department and detailed lines, roll number, name. There will be other information because of the limitation on the space in the screen, I gain only two columns, normally only many more columns, address and so on. Okay, That is not relevant. The point is that there is something like a control heading and there are detailed lines and there is a column heading. Detail each line contains information about one record in the particular set. And then control footing, say total number of students in aerospace engineering is so and so. In this case, it would say 4, of course, it looks very small, again because of limitation of the screen size. So, control list of uh, student chemical engineering. That is, if suppose after the arrows, chemical comes, then the chemical engineering students are listed and a list of student chemical engineering department and the total number it will say. Total number of students uh, control footing uh, in uh, for that chemical engineering department is total number of student chemical engineering department 63 and uh, final control footing the total number of students whose, uh, whose information has appeared in this report is total number of students in semester 1 is 1852. So, you add up all those and report for the end of IISC Bangalore rural list for semester 1, 2000, 2001. So, this kind of uh, various uh, uh, points which uh, we did, uh, we, we, we talked about. 
and uh, normally a print chart with uh, appropriate number of columns um, and squares for each column are designed by the output designer it is called a print chart uh, to develop the proper kind of report format. So, that before you are going to the machine you can do that because nowadays you can do it interactively. Language is available to describe formats of reports and report generation programs exist to create a report. In other words, there is a lot of advance now. In the very olden days one had to sit down and write out and do all that. Now in the days of terminal and uh, 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 keyboards and good good video screens and so on, there are report generation programs called crystal reports and other types of many many report generation programs which are available which are their own language. It is, it is like a high level language. In that language you can describe a report um, and that you have to learn that language. It is fairly straightforward language and it used to be called report uh, generator programs. So, once you write this program and uh, you uh, give the appropriate information to that program, then automatically it will generate the uh, appropriate headings, footings, control footings, all, the, all that very nicely. So, you do not uh, and also the formats you can describe like in a uh, like for instance in a in a C programs and so on, you can describe how many columns should be reserved and stuff like that. So, same way you can effectively define the reports uh, in terms of a language okay. and um, that is called a, a report program generator. General principles of for designing uh, reports is that uh, any, any report you should be able to these are all common sense ideas it is not very something which uh, one has to spend a lot of time about. One should be able to read from uh, left to right because that is the way you normally read except if it is in Urdu you read from right to left. English we lift, read from left to right and then from top to bottom and easy to find important information such as keys uh, they should be available in a, with a proper heading. All pages should be numbered and must have a heading. A report date is essential and uh, the date of one when that report is being generated that becomes very important particularly for archival purposes and all columns should be labeled and um, keep only essential details do not put all kinds of unnecessary details uh, proper use of control footings so that you can uh, do an audit trail page and report footing is, uh, are very useful space for end of report signature if needed very often suppose you have printed a whole set of checks somebody who is responsible for that printing and distributing the checks has to authenticate at the end and there will be an operational management person who has to sign at the end of, the rep of these things. Similarly, in the at the end of a report which is a payroll report or a grade report somebody who is responsible should sign at the end. So, that uh, it is the responsibility can be fixed. So, very often people forget that signature is required and they do not allow the space and uh, it is again common sense you have to essentially even maybe print out signature and, uh, and, and then above that provide space for signature. Okay. See now a lot of uh, apart from printed forms and so on see large scale printed forms or big forms are used for payroll, date sheets and so on that is normally using a line printer. But uh, for uh, uh, many of the day to day work particularly for strategic management, tactical management and so on you provide reports on screens that is a screen of a video terminal and it is screen display is convenient for interactive use because you can actually move your mouse around and kind of click something and get on, get on to some other page and things like that. And screen size is normally smaller something like 80 columns and 24 lines per screen. Uh, principles of layout are similar that is ease of reading is extremely important. Um, 
Creation should be made at the bottom of the screen to continue. So, you, there should be some place, some button which you go and uh, click to continue. Nowadays, screens are using buttons which can be clicked using a mouse to get details and also exit from the screen. Exit continue or normally the at the end. For instance, uh, screen with general student information, news of science, student information report and uh, it would be available for for the department or the uh, or de departmental offices or registrar's office wherever it is appropriate. Even in terms of inquiry areas like public relations officer or hostels and stuff like that. And uh, so, this screen will have the st uh, names of students uh, in maybe in uh, some alphabetical order, department, year in which the person is studying and then if you want to get a details then you click details and you get to that uh, details. Otherwise, you say continue, go to the next page and exit, you want to exit the report. Okay. So, um, if you want details, you had if you click details, then you have, it gives the uh, further details including the address and so on. If more details are available, then you again click details and give more details. Okay. Or if there is only the details, then it will just stay at that point and you have to return and uh, then go, go for some other person you want to get the details, click that person and go to details. details. And uh, this is this is primarily the uh, kind of uh, uh, reports which are very often used, but for both tactical and operational management. And um, graphics is our more important strategy information, shows information in pictorial form which is easy to understand. I, I already said why you require picture because it is uh, brings out the uh, very quickly the significance of the output. And uh, in bar you use different types of pictures for different purposes. Bar charts brings out the relative distribution is easy to see. You know, so suppose you have a bar chart of, of marks of students in a class, bar chart will say uh, how many out of 100 for 100 students how many got uh, above 95, how many got between 85 and 95 and so on. The chart will essentially tell you and uh, how many got very low marks. So, normally it will have it will be a, sh a curve where, where it will be small at the very high marks and small at very low marks and maximum will in the middle, ma middle range. Okay. It also will tell you uh, what kind of distribution it is it is in terms of the uh, uh, the class okay and so relative distribution is easy to see pie charts are used for resources percent of resources used for various purposes is easy to, easy to see trends are easy to see in xy graphics things are growing like stock market prices uh, or the sales figures and so on they always show a, a graph so that you can say prices are going up or going down and if your sales are going up or going down. So, that is a, a bar uh, the XY, XY graphics is very easy. If you want to show geographical distribution, that is we have got many cities where uh, you have operations and how, uh, how much of say how many cars are being sold in Chennai, how many are sold in Bangalore and all that, then you can have a picture or uh, map of India and each of those city is shown and then the cities will have uh, by the side the number of uh, cars sold or zonal wise east zone, west zone, north zone, south zone, what uh, what sales figures are there, things that type you can you can use for because very quickly it says south is doing better or north is doing better whatever. So, for instance total sales use of graphs, total sales uh, of textiles in lakhs. So, you can see it is, it is kind of slowly growing, but there is a dip in a particular year and you ask the question why was there a dip in that year and you try to find out the reasons. That is what the strategic management is all about. Okay. And the bar chart, you know the number of employees by age. Now, when you look at the chart, you immediately see that there is a fair large, fairly large employees uh, uh, in the 50. 50 age group. That means, you have to plan for retirement, you are the uh, the words very, very soon the 50s will become 60s 
and uh, so the company may be aging in terms of the average age. So, you got to do some recruitment of younger people to kind of make the uh, distribution uh, less skewed in terms of having too many people who are old, having more people who are younger. And you may take strategic decisions to give uh, things like uh, VRS, voluntary retirement scheme because there are too many old people and I would like to recruit new fresh blood and I might give a, an incentive to them, to the older people to leave earlier and take early retirement and things like that. So, the point is <coughs> this kind of a chart brings out significance and very quickly you can see uh, what uh, decisions are to be taken based on this chart. And a pie chart for instance, the, it, it gives the uh, way in which the money is being spent. You say that 20 percent is being spent on salaries and raw materials 20 percent is being spent. Uh, 5 percent is being spent in R and D and you see here that interest payments are 15 percent and uh, you kind of you wake up that is I am paying that means I have borrowed too much money, maybe I should reduce that uh, and uh, if the raw material costs are going up maybe I should reduce that. So, the point is the pie charts essentially tells where the money is going, okay, where the budget is going and that would give a good idea for the job management to be able to kind of uh, take an appropriate decision. So, that is the, uh, so the to con conclude this uh, module uh, on uh, output devices, we saw that uh, there are number of types of output devices and you have to pick the right device for the right application. And similarly, you also have to find out the right type of report to be sent to the right type of people at the right time. And the content of the report should also be appropriate for the level of management for whom it is intended. That is, it should be user oriented, appropriate for the user. So, that is essentially the, uh, the primary purpose of this particular module. But one thing which is happening, which I want to get into next, is that the, there is a trend towards having network computers and the network computers are becoming more and more important not only in the case of individual companies, but also in the case of the fact that e-commerce and so on are growing quite a bit and e-commerce depends entirely on having a, a good network. So, we look at very quickly in the next module even though this course is not about computer networks and uh, internet and so on. I have to review a little bit of that for with you in this, in this course to be able to understand also the, uh, the web based reporting, the worldwide web based reporting. And uh, also uh, later on in the course, uh, we will talk about e-commerce. So, e-commerce worldwide web becomes essential. So, we need to have some method of uh, uh, so we have to understand the implications of a network and what types of networks are available and how to use those networks for various applications. So, I am going to spend some time on the networks in the uh, uh, rest of the lecture. We, are, we said that we are going to talk about uh, web and documents in the web. We have to say something about the internet and the world wide web and uh, the documents in the world wide, how to uh, put documents in the world wide web. Basic technology used to build the internet, we have to learn something about it, how the world wide web uses the internet, because world wide web is an application on the internet and how documents is specified using something called hypertext markup language and the distinction between presentation and structure of documents. That is a very interesting kind of a, we talked about report program generators. And uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the HTML and XML are real languages which are used for generating reports on the web and how document is specified using the uh, uh, extended markup language it is called or uh, HTML is called the hypertext markup language. And uh, we examined how documents are formatted and printed 
and document in that context meant results computed by a computer. In a more general context, one should look at also documents which are to be disseminated in the world wide web. Uh, this is what I was saying that uh, world wide becomes, web becomes very important with the emergence of the internet. Uh, besides dissemination, one should also consider possibility of reading values from documents stored in remote computers and processing them for various purposes because uh, the every computer is connected to every other computer today. The need to exchange documents electronically and processing them have gained importance since the emergence of the of e-commerce. Uh, understand the need to distribute documents electronically should first understand how computers are connected together and how they communicate in an orderly fashion among themselves. That is the reason I am going to talk about networks a little bit. Thus, we will first examine very briefly the internet in the world wide web uh, which, which uses the internet infrastructure. As I said, no computer today has an isolated existence. A computer is an organization are connected to a local area network within the organization and computers at your, in your home uh, are connected through telephone lines uh, or wide band lines to the to internet service provider. So, your, even the home computer becomes a part of the worldwide network of computers. Uh, local organizations of uh, LANs or local area networks are organizations connected to local area networks of other organizations because each organization has got its own LAN and these LANs are interconnected through either a, a public switch telephone network. There is my public switch telephone network or communication lines which are provided by uh, communication providers like BSNL India, BSNL uh, as well as uh, Reliance and Tata and Focom and so on. Okay. Um, and uh, so, this interconnection uh, uses so called routers and so on. Internet is a network of networks and interconnects millions of computers all over the world. So, uh, the, the lands of different organizations are interconnected, individuals are connected through the internet service provider to uh, other computers which may belong to a LAN of an organization and internet is used to exchange electronic mail, exchange files and log into remote computers. So, uh, you have done all of that probably and uh, common set of rules must be used by computers connected to the internet to communicate. So, it is called the internet protocol. Now, unless, unless there is a common set of rules which every computer uses to communicate, then communication cannot happen between computers and computers are of, of various types and varieties. There are desktop machines, there are laptop machines, uh, there are uh, machines which are mainframes, there are uh, mainframes made by IBM, there are uh, IPCs made by, uh, uh, by Dell and so on. So, there are varieties of machines and also different architecture. Sun computers are very different from HP computers and HP computers would be different from uh, PCs and, and IBM's machines will be very different from the HP computers. So, the point is that different architecture machines all need to kind of communicate and that can happen only if there is a common agreed on set of rules of communication. This is called a protocol. So, internet protocol is universally used for connecting computers to the internet. Each computer is connected to the internet has a unique address called its IP address. The IP address is unique for every computer connected to the network and it is a 4 bytes long and uh, it is a scarce resource because number of computers are increasing all the time and so uh, there is always a demand for new IP addresses and so now they are going towards the next generation IP not will happen, but it is expected to happen in the next 2 3 years. When you go to the next generation of IP, the number of addresses will drastically increase. So, that is uh, something which people are uh, looking forward to. Um, IP address of course, are numeric strings and numbers um, and they convert it to strings of characters which are easy to remember because as far as we are concerned, it is difficult for us to remember 
a large you know something which is a so you know like cell phone number so, so many digits 10 digits you have to remember there are certain if you have 16 digits to remember it is always very difficult to remember that okay and uh, so you kind of combine them to understandable groups like the the address for instance uh, uh, i is, a, is an ip address for uh, b uh, which is converted to a, a unique address which is of a type which is can be remembered so for instance the uh, uh, it is divided address are divided into number of parts uh, starting from the right to left the last part is topmost domain normally gives a country code and uh, next one are net this uh, n is the country code it is called topmost domain and this is the internet uh, uh, service provider and um, IAC is the, uh, uh, the place where I belong like for instance if I kind of look at IAC this is the organization registered with the ISP that is where I, to, to which I belong. SCRC is a department within the organization name is assigned by the organization in other words the IAC gets a group of IP addresses and within that group there are signs for, for various departments and the departments assign in terms in turn to the individuals in the department and um, Rajaran is the name of the user in the department assigned by the department and this hierarchy of addressing facilitated expansion suppose tomorrow one more person joins the department then you can give one more one more address for that person and give a add it without touching the rest of the thing okay and um, similarly if the internet service provider namely arnet uh, gets one more organization as their um, subscriber they can add a new uh, subscriber name just like iic they can add our name okay so that is that is the whole idea okay and uh, internet breaks up messages sent from a source registration to number of packets. It is called packet switching because the packet switching is extremely important. I will explain why. And the packet structure, that is every packet there is, if you got a long message, it is broken up into a number of packets and each packet has its own existence you might say. And the packets are sent one after the other but they can take different routes. The advantage being that you suppose one route is busy or one route is down for some reason, it can take another route. So different packets can take different routes and that is the advantage of packeting, packetizing and that is what has led to the uh, decrease in the cost of uh, all the um, uh, you know, you spend send your email at almost no cost. And uh, now, of course, people are talking about voice or IP. That is, using the internet, uh, having a telephone conversation, which is at very, very low cost. So, these are all possible because of this technology. And um, the packet structure, that is, a, this is a part of the message. And then these are all kind of labels the source address, from where it starts, with destination address serial number of the packet because the packets can arrive out of order and control bits are checking if there is any error in this uh, have some parity bits and stuff like that okay and and the payload can be there is actual message can be up to 1 kb fairly large but um, um, not large enough for say voice and so on uh, Packets need not be a fixed length, maximum is 1 kb. Messages packeted to allow different packets to go along different paths. It is called packet switching. Okay. Each packet can get the cheapest path to take, and finally, the packets are reassembled using the serial number because each packet has got a serial number, as we saw, and its own existence, as I said. A packet switching is less expensive and adaptive to faulty paths and so on. Major disadvantage of packet switching is the difficulty of predicting actual time should be taken by different packets because one packet may take one route, another packet may take another route and the route times, times taken by different routes 
may be different and also they will change, they will be dynamically changing because many people are using that network. Suddenly one line may become very congested. So, the router will route it to a different path which is relatively free. And so, you cannot predict ahead of time which particular path a particular uh, packet will take. So, they, they would normally arrive out of order, but then you got to have a method of uh, reordering them at the recipient's place to be able to make sense for the person who gets the final message. This creates a little bit of a problem for voice. If the voice is cut up into different parts and it takes a long time to reassemble them, then you have a lot of delay between sending the voice and uh, receiving the voice. And that is disturbing because conversation cannot go on. In fact, even in telephones, you suppose if satellite communication is used for telephones, you find that there is a certain delay for the uh, uh, speech to go to the satellite and come back to you. Uh, and uh, this delay is disturbing to the user. And so, people have come up with better solutions in terms of reserving lines and so on, where reservation protocols are used to be able to make it somewhat less uh, choppy, the, uh, the assembly one. So, the voice over IP is now becoming much more sophisticated than the earlier methods. Okay. Um, it does not matter for email and text files and uh, for audio and video it is a little bit of a problem. Um, major advantage of uh, the protocol is that diverse machines and LANs may be interconnected if they use the same common protocol. It is called TCP IP. Okay. Uh, transmission control protocol, internet protocol. Transmission control protocol is the one which is used to reassemble all the packets which come out of order. Okay. And uh, I will not go into details of it, but that is essentially the protocol which is used by the internet. Um, e, the, this, this protocol and the, uh, the uh, primarily the availability of uh, applications on the uh, internet are able transferring file from one, one IP address to another IP address, remotely log into any, any other computer and, uh, and so on. And um, within an organization, if all the facilities which are available on the internet are available to the local area network, even the same protocol, same programs and so on, it is called a corporate intranet. Internet is for the worldwide connection intranet is for the individual organization's connection. Two corporate intranets may be interconnected using a leased line uh, and uh, from a, uh, in a public switch telephone network and that is called the extranet. That is suppose multiple organizations decide to cooperate and interconnect their own internet, intranets together to have a private uh, collection like for instance a company may be a manufacturer and they will have their own uh, intranet and another company may be a spare part supplier or, or component supplier. A component supplier may have its own intranet and there may be a, a, a person who is your uh, distributor of cars and he will have his own intranet because you have multiple branches within a, within a city. So, all these need to be connected together to be able to smoothly function as a overall structure with from a supplier to the manufacturer to the showrooms and consumer and so on. So, this they, they are cooperating companies and then they connect it together and they allow access to certain types of files and that is called a, an extranet. Uh, extranet between cooperative organizations can provide internet services uh, between them. Okay. World Wide Web is a worldwide multimedia information service available on the internet okay. and um, it contains web pages created using a language called HTML, hypertext mark markup language. In fact, web browsing is one of the most common things people do. HTML is features to embed links within the web pages to point to other pages. The greatest advantage of HTML is that you know, when you do a search 
uh, it can link to other similar kind of sites and take you to other sites. So, uh, uh, HTML is, uh, has got features to link other web pages and we can navigate through the links and search for required information. That is why it is called hypertext. Uh, normal text is just a single page and uh, does not link to anything else. Whereas, hypertext links to other pages and if, when you click the link, then it gets a new page, the, the link page. Like uh, each web page ha has a scheme called uniform resource locator. The uniform resource locator is used to be able to um, get to a particular um, um, web, web page which is stored using that locator you can immediately go to that web page and get the information which you want. Okay? And if you know exactly the web address of a company or an individual, you can put the URL on the using a, a program called a browser and it will immediately bring out that, uh, that for you. So, the HTTP is a protocol which is used for this interconnection and www is of course, the world wide web and uh, FreeSort is the domain name of the server having the web page. Uh, and the connected, the FreeSort.org is the company who is, uh, which is the domain name of the company having the web page which you, uh, which you want to look at. Folder with required information is in connected. That is, this has the folder with the required information. And uh, this is the required document formatted using hypertext mark markup language. So, that is why that is what it is this says. Web browser is a program on PC used to search for required information. Browsers use uh, search engines. There is a program which will navigate web pages using links like Internet Explorer, Netscape and so on. Search engines use to obtain relevant web pages using search terms. For example, Google search engine where you can use search terms. If you do not know the URL, you can use search terms and uh, get information. Like you want to find out about Indian cars, you can just write Indian cars and it will bring out the web pages of various car manufacturers in India. In fact, it will bring out a whole lot of information wherever Indian and car occurs, see. And of course, you have to do a shift filtering through that. All organizations now maintain a web page to establish their web presence. Web presence, uh, that is, you, it, it tells the world that you exist. Okay? Web presence is very important for companies to be able to be visible to the, uh, to the rest of the world because uh, worldwide web has become such so pervasive, including every home has it that uh, the web page is very carefully maintained by most companies and lots of individuals also maintain on their, on their own web pages to be able to give information about themselves. Uh, particularly if there is a person who is a consultant who wants to kind of attract customers, he will have that. Web presence is important to publicize organizations primarily advertising the services. The, docu the uh, document has got three parts in, in, the, in the context of, uh, in fact, any context, but it is uh, specifically important in the context of a uh, uh, web page creation as well as linking and uh, methods of uh, uh, document uh, storage and retrieval on the World Wide Web. Um, the string of characters normally called coded in ASCII or Unicode. See, the uh, content is normally uh, a set of ASCII characters. Uh, coded, uh, I, nowadays of course, Unicode is used particularly for multiple languages uh, because Unicode uh, is a 16-bit code and it covers almost the entire languages in the world including very, very special symbols like alpha, beta, gamma and things like that. A document nowadays also includes uh, text, pictures, audio and video. Uh, ultimately, all of them become bit strings because they are going to be digitized, all of them. We will have a primary concern textual data in, uh, because we are not really talking too much about uh, 
uh, other types of data in this course. Okay. How the data looks like to a human user? Presentation is what we talked about in the report generation and report presentation. And the structure helps interpretation of data by computer. In other words, the presentation on a page is important for a human user. If a computer has to use that data, it needs to have some more information about the structure. What I mean by structure is, uh, is it a, a, a number? Is, is there a set of characters? Uh, is there a data structure like a vector? Or is it a record structure? So, that kind of a structure is important for, uh, uh, for a computer to know in order to process it. Uh, type of data does not structure present, numeric, alphanumeric and uh, also information such as is it an invoice, is it a purchase order, is it a recipe, things like that because each document has got its own nature. A recipe has got always uh, something with which it starts saying that uh, the ingredients required, then the method of cooking and then how many does it serve and uh, things like that. Okay. So, each one has got a structure. Similarly, invoice has a structure. Uh, which and purchase order has got a structure. Uh, text processors add special annotations primarily to help format resulting uh, printouts. Okay. The text formatting, text, text like word processors, they essentially do a formatting to make it some, some bold face, some uh, italics and then paginate, write justify, uh, things of that type. Okay. Uh, paragraphing, font selection, page, page, pagination, tabulation, etc. So, word, word is a common example. There are primarily presentation aids which take raw content and transform it into neat looking documents when displayed on the video or printed on paper. They have no idea about the type of document and what they mean. They just do not, uh, uh, you know, there is no semantic information built in. Meaning of the document is not, whether it is invoice or a payroll, uh, it, it cannot distinguish because it does not know. They are all character strings as well as the uh, format is concerned. Web processors are primarily used for applications such as preparation of manuals, preparation of catalogs, routine office correspondence, desktop publishing, for all that, of course, the word processor is used. Uh, report generators we discussed. Uh, are special special variety which is a special language to generate the format of reports. Okay. So the air only again format is what is important, not the content. Okay. So primarily for linear text and not meant for linked text known as hypertext. Hypertext is what is important in the World Wide Web context. The World Wide Web documents located in many computers are linked. So uh, the web pages need to be uh, interconnected. Each one has got a unique path to retrieve it. Documents to be used in the web pages need special annotation or markers mainly for formatting and for linking them to other documents in the web. These annotations are called markups. So, this is what there is a greatest advance which took place in terms of the uh, one of the biggest applications of internet, okay, the, the coming of the web because that has transformed the entire way in which even commerce is done. And that is the reason we have to talk about e-commerce in this uh, in this course. As documents in the World Wide Web are linked to many documents, they are called hypertext. The markup used to link documents is called a hyperlink. And web pages are retrieved from the host computers where they are located by a program called web browser running on a client. This is what we talked about. Uh, clients use a communication protocol called hypertext trans transfer protocol and uh, language recognized by HTTP is called hypertext text mar markup language, which is essentially a formatting language. Uh, hypertext markup language has a special layout because you have something like, it has got a syntax like any, any language, HTML version is uh, something which can give the version number which is optional and then heading, headings and the tags are placed here. So, the head, head, it starts with a double arrow head and ends with a double arrow in which there is a slash to say that it is the end of the heading. Okay. And then the body and the end of the body and the uh, end of HTML. 
okay. And uh, the exclamation symbol is used for comments and uh, elements such as text with formatting tags, links, tables, images, etc. are put in the body. I will give an example. Example of a document, HTML, I have not given the version number and so on, head, title description of book and information technology, that is what the heading is. And the body, introduction to uh, information technology and uh, slash I, I will. This H1 means it is a heading, the first level heading. The second level heading says that it is a first level textbook in IT. And uh, then publisher uh, and in italics, so I, I now shows the uh, publisher and italics print is all of India and uh, in bold face the, uh, uh, the year of publication, 2003 will be in bold face because B shows the bold face, I shows italics. So, the point really is you can do certain kind of formatting as well as uh, uh, styling of the document using this, this language. And I am not going to go into great detail about this because it is not a purpose in this course, but to give you a flavor of what, uh, what this does. When a document is viewed using a browser, it will appear uh, introduction to technology, a uh, first level books. The headings are normally in bold face and then a publisher print is out of India and year of publication 2003. Actually, 2003 should be in bold, but it is not actually brought out as a bold in this typing. Okay. But uh, this is brought out prop properly in italics. If it, it should appear like year of publication 2003 bold. Okay. HTML tells uh, HTML documents the HTML document that is beginning and uh, the, the, the slash HTML is the end and the version title I mean I told all about this. H1 to H, uh, there are 6 levels of headings and uh, various sizes bold face H1 to H, the highest uh, size is H1 and the lowest size is H6. P indicates paragraphing, I indicates italics, B bold face and uh, tags uh, the example of the end beginning tag and end tag, uh, HTML is a tag, the uh, body is a tag and so on. Okay. And HTML can link documents in other files. For example, to link to an image we use uh, uh, image source is mypicture.gif. So, the, this will uh, connect, connect to an image called my uh, my picture dot gif okay. and uh, I may only indicates the image and SRC indicates the source. Okay. It, it is observed that it is a standalone tag, it is, does not have an end unlike the other cases. Okay. HTML allows a web page to refer to other web pages. Okay. When the reference link in that page is clicked, the browser switches to the reference site. Like the A is anchor tag and if you click that, it will it will get to that web page uh, given by www.iisc.ernetin. Linking can also be to other files. That is, I have given it to other. In this case, uh, for another um, uh, web page, it can be to a file also. Automatic conversion of web documents to HTML is possible. In other words, the the it is possible today to do that. Okay, and. Uh, there are lots of shortcomings of HTML which we will look at in great detail and the next successor called XML which we will talk about in the next lecture.